this uh, this lecture is on the based on the fundamentals of economics which helps you to understand the different concept of the economics and gives you a nice beginning in the economic subject it it will clear all your doubts regarding money and its function. After this lecture, you will be able to answer the following question and understand this concept very nicely. That is about the definition of money, traditional and empiricist approach of money, near money concept, the difference between the pure money and near money, the functions of money. There are various functions of money which you are able to understand very well in this lecture. And what is the barter system available in the previous time? So, uh, let's talk about the money and its function very well. First, understand the money. We know money very well. You, uh, money is about just about currency and everything. But money is a very broad and a very big concept. And everyone don't know about money exactly what is it. So let's understand this. Money is anything that is generally accepted for payment of goods and services or accepted in settlement of debt. So money is, if I want to buy something, I have to pay for that, and that is money. I have, I will pay for, uh, for example, car, clothes, or tuition fees, etc. So it is about payment of, for payment of goods and services, where, uh, for which I am accepting something. There are two approaches to define money. First one is a traditional approach, and the second one is the empiricist approach. Traditional approach is available. A traditional approach is in the uh, used in the uh, ancient era, whereas empiricist approach is a modern approach used currently in a modern era. What is traditional approach? Traditional approach is anything is money which functions only as a medium of exchange. Anything is money which functions only as a medium of exchange. If I want to buy something, then I have to pay for that. For example, if I would like to buy a car, I have to pay the amount for that car. So it is known as medium of exchange. There are two criteria to define money according to the traditional approach. The first one is, is its general acceptability. Money is accepted overall worldwide. So it is about the general acceptability criteria. And the second one is its functional aspect. According to this, money is what money does. So it is its functional aspect. What money is doing it is its functional aspect and that is known as money. So according to the traditional approach, money is anything which functions generally as a medium of exchange. Let's talk about the empiricist approach. Empiricist approach is a very complex phenomenon. Uh, 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 it is a complex phenomenon of money. It does not cover just currency or coins. Uh, it covers pure money plus near money. We will understand pure money and near money uh, in this lecture itself in detail. Pure money is just currency and coins, whereas near money is a very broad concept. In the empiricist approach, it talks about the stability of the demand function, the high degree of substitutability, that is, uh, we can buy another product in the substitute of one product. And the third one is the feasibility of measuring statistic variations in real economic factors. Let's understand near money. Pure money we understand that is coins and currencies, whereas near money covers all financial media that are used in the exchange transaction of the modern economic system. It is more than currency and coins. It includes currency, coins. It also includes demand deposits of commercial bank. For example, if you have account in the SBI, then the checks of SBI is also known as near money. It is not it is not pure money, it is near money because you can get that money in a very frequent time, but uh, it can't be the substitute of money currency. So the demand deposits of commercial banks, securities such as bonds, debentures, time deposits, equity shares of any company. So that all are the near money. There are many types of near money that can be saving deposits with banks, bills of exchange, 
treasury bills, travelers checks, shares of investment trust. When you are going somewhere, you you would not like to carry the currency, the bundle of currency with you. So uh, you would like to have a traveler's check that is also work as money, but it is a near money. So that is about money, pure money and near money. The coin and the currency are known as money. It's an example of this. Whereas near money are the share certificate of the share certificate of any company, traveler's check, treasury bills, etc. You understand the concept of pure money and near money. Let's have a summary of it, uh, of the difference between money and near money. Money is known as pure money, whereas near money is a different term from the money. Pure money includes coins, currency notes, and demand deposits of bank, whereas near money includes financial assets like time deposits, bills of exchange, government bonds, shares, etc. Pure money has 100% liquidity because uh, it's available to currency notes and uh, or coins. So, at any period of time, you can buy anything from that currency. So, it is known as 100% liquidity. Whereas near money lacks 100% liquidity because it is in terms of uh, checks of any commercial banks or bonds or securities. So, uh, you can have a money with you in a very frequent time. You can convert that bonds or checks in a, uh, into currency notes in a very frequent time, but uh, then also uh, it lacks 100% liquidity because it is not in currency terms. Pure money is not an income earning asset because you are holding currency and uh, you are not investing it in some other purpose. You are holding it with you only. So it won't become an income earning asset for you. Whereas near money is income earning asset because you are investing it in uh, other companies in terms of bonds, debentures, uh, equity shares, etc. So it is income earning asset. Near money is income earning asset. Pure money is functions as a unit of account and common measure of value. We will understanding what is unit of account and common measure of value in detail today itself. Whereas near money is not fully functioning as a unit of account and common measure of value. We have four functions of money. First one is money as a medium of exchange. The second is money as a unit of account. Third one is money as a standard of deferred payment and the fourth one is money as a source of value. So we can say that money is a measure of function for a medium, a measure, standard and a store. First, let's understand the first function of money. First is money as a medium of exchange. If an auntie going to buy vegetables in the market, they buy some of the items and they are paying uh, some money to, uh, to the vegetable seller, then it is known as, it is functioning as medium of exchange. For buying anything, you are paying money. So it works as, it functions as medium of exchange. It is about paying money for anything you buy. Money as a medium of exchange, it's a means of payment. You are paying for anything. So it's a means of payment. It good circul it has a good circulating medium. We know that money is a very and we can uh, exchange it at anywhere, at any place in the world. So it has a good circulating medium. It possesses that attributes like uniformity, durability, portability, general acceptability, divisibility. We can, if I want to, uh, if there is a bulk, the bulk of 1000, but I just want of uh, 100 rupees, then I can divide, uh, divide the item and pay according to that only. Whatever I buy, I will pay for that only. So it is a concept of divisibility. General accessibility is, uh, it is money is accepted everywhere. So it is about general accessibility. It has uniformity. It is in the same manner. It has durability because you can buy money at this point of time or it uh, can be in future period. So it has durability and portability. Money helps to upweight the difficulties of the barter system. Uh, in the ancient era, we, ha we have seen that there is a barter system and uh, 
uh, the lots of difficulties arises in the barter system. Money as a medium of exchange helps to uh, obviate the difficulties of barter system. Let's first understand what is a barter system. Barter system is a situation where there is no use of money. Goods are exchanged against goods only. From example, you can say that if you want, uh, if a girl wants books and a guy wants bananas, then they are exchanging. Girl gives her banana to a guy, and the guy gives uh, her, his books to a girl. So, anyway, it is about the vital system. Goods are exchanged against goods. Here, uh, there, there is example of Johnny and Mahir. Uh, Johnny gives an apple to the Mahir and Mahir gives his gold to Johnny and uh, their both their both needs were fulfilled. So it is about barter system. But we know that barter systems, there is various difficulties in the barter system. For example, want of coincidence. There is barter, barter system exists only when the both person, both, uh, both person has the same need. If I have uh, uh, if I have books and I want grains, but uh, the person who want books and they uh, they don't have grains, then the barter system won't exist because the goods which I have I want uh, is not with them. So it is the want of coincidence. Then the want of means of subdivisions. The, we can't divide a very uh, big. Uh, big good into a smaller parts if there is goods like cows or buffaloes etc so uh, there is no any measure to divide uh, goods there is a lack of standard of deferred payment i can't give goods into a future period of time i have to go i have to give them at that period of time when i receiving some goods so it lacks uh, it lacks of standard of deferred payment then uh, there is also lacking of efficient store of value if there is perishable goods we can't uh, store it and use it in a future period of time i have to use that at that point of time only so it is about the barter system the second function of money is money as a unit of account. It is a means of calculating the relative prices of goods and services. It provides basis for keeping accounts, calculating profit and loss, costing, etc. Uh, money as a unit of account means it uh, means of calculating the relative prices of goods and services. So. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, India, we have rupee, dollar, we have USA, euro, European Union. So it is a unit of account which which helps to measure uh, measure the prices of related goods. For example, uh, if I want to buy a car and it is worth rupees five lakh, then we can say that it is worth rupees five lakh. Or I want to buy something in USA, then I can uh, say that it is of dollar five or dollar fifteen around. So it is help to calculating the relative prices of goods and services. How money as a unit of account is differed from money as a from medium of exchange. Students often confuse with the medium of exchange and a unit of account. Here there is a marking difference between medium of exchange and a unit of account. Medium of exchange is a currency notes, coins, credit entry in a bank account, whereas unit of account is a symbol of rupee uh, or a symbol of dollar, uh, for, uh, for example. Unit of account is just as a mode of expression. If uh, I want to buy something, I, I want to calculate price of uh, any goods and services, then I can measure that uh, price in terms of rupee, in terms of dollar, in terms of euro, etc. So, unit of account is just as a mode of expression, just as a measure, whereas money as a medium of exchange have a uh, have a uh, physical existence, but uh, physical existence, but unit of account don't have physical ex uh, existence. So money as a unit of account is a very abstract term. We, we can't see it as a uh, physical existence. We don't have physical exchange, ex existence of unit of account, but medium of exchange is a very concrete term. For example, the rupee is a notion has no physical existence, but the rupee note is a physical entity. So this way, money as a unit of account is different from money as a medium of exchange. 
the third, the third function of money is money is a standard of deferred payment. If I want to buy something at this period of time, but I don't have money right now, I will be able to pay it in a future period of time. So money has a standard of deferred payment. I can uh, pay uh, for that in a future period of time when I buy that thing uh, at particular period of time. So in modern economy, this option is also available with the person. And this concept is known as standard of deferred payment. From the example, we can see that uh, a couple want to buy a bag, but they don't have cash at that period of time. So the seller says that you can pay it in a future period of time and you have buy it right now. So it is an, a great unit of measure that enables people to contract for future period, payments and receipt. You can pay in a future and have goods at this period of time. How this function, money as a standard of different payment works. Customer wants goods at particular period of time and uh, supplier are also ready to supply. between the time value of money. The seller which are selling goods in 1000 rupees at this period of time had 1000 rupees and uh, changed after 5 years. So there is a uh, time value of money is also affected to them. If there is difference in the 1000 rupees of now is not same as 1000 rupees after 5 years. So uh, this customer Good supplier gets go, uh, gets money from the bank. For example, it works as an intermediary. Good supplier gets money from the bank, and customer will pay their uh, the money of the goods to the bank after five years. But there is a difference. The goods of one thousand is paid paid to the bank as one to five zero one thousand two hundred and fifty. So it is a payment of deferred period. And they have to give because of there is decrease in the decrease in the value of money. There is time value of money, so that bank have to uh, so that customer have to pay somewhat higher money to the bank. But, uh, this way, the money as a standard of deferred payment works. The fourth function of money as a store of value is anything that retains its purchasing power over time. You can store money at uh, at some period of time. To get uh, more benefit, to get purchasing power. If you have money, higher money right now, if you have savings, you can save it for some period of time, and in future period of time, you can use for your further usage. So it is about money as a store of money as a store of value. Money uh, as a store of uh, value. These all are these all are the function of the uh, these all are the functions of the money. Um, hope you will enjoy the session. It's, uh, hope you will enjoy the session. It helps you to the uh, it helps you to understand the money, the definition of money, and the function of money. We will discuss about the types of money and the concept of uh, economy in detail in the further sessions. Stay tuned for that. Hope this uh, session would like you. Uh, have a nice day. Thank you.